guys welcome back to my channel I hope you're having a great day so far so today I'm gonna to be talking to you about all things brands I feel a little series coming on in the very near future on my channel I have a few ideas for videos talking about brands brands I love brands I hate brands I used to love all the tea that I feel, all my feelings, my deep inner thoughts, my unspoken voice about brands, beauty and makeup brands. So today I'm going to be sharing with you five of my favourite brands, my top five brands that my go-tos, my five that I am leaving in 2019 that no longer do it for me, that don't excite me, I don't feel like buying anything from, and my five in 2020 I want to try more from. Brands I don't know that well, brands I would like to try more from, brands that I'm excited to see some good stuff in 2020 let's get started so i'm gonna start off with the good my favorite five brands let's see how many you can guess before i start telling you the answers hit me up in the comment section and try to guess what you think are my fave five <laughs> brands my five favorite brands hmm. There's five. So these are in no particular order and it'd be very hard for me to put these in an order because I feel like it varies depending on whether we're talking about eyeshadows or if we're talking about complexion products or if we're talking about lip products. It's a different answer for like each category but as an overall sweeping statement for all of the products these are my absolute go-tos. Every product they bring out I'm like interested in i'm intrigued by because i know how many products of theirs that i have loved in the past and therefore it makes me want to always try what they put out because they are consistent and they are consistently brilliant so it will come as no surprise to you to learn that one of these five is charlotte tilbury charlotte tilbury i mean we have the same name so we are twins almost there really is no products that i do not like from charlotte tilbury i i don't love her mascaras they're a bit too soft and natural for like my mascara kind of preference but they aren't bad and other than that i struggle to tell you a single product and that's skincare and makeup that I've ever tried from her that hasn't become like a staple in my collection. I love her, both of her foundations, not so much the magic, just not my type of foundation, but her newest airbrush flawless and her light wonder are both absolute favorites of mine. Her primers, I love her Hollywood flawless filter. I love her, like her, don't even get me started on her cheap products. They are highlight, bronzes, blushes, Top a notch. I love all her lipsticks. Got one of her lipsticks on today. This is In Love with Olivia and Pillow Talk Liner. I just. Mm, one of the loves of my life. The next brand that I absolutely love is Anastasia Beverly Hills. I feel like they just go from strength to strength. Obviously, they kind of started off as like brow queens, then they became eyeshadow queens now they've fully entered into the complexion market with one of my absolute favorite foundations one of my absolute favorite bronzes some of my absolute favorite blushes and highlights too i feel like there's nothing that they can't excel at i'm always excited to see what they come out with palettes even if i feel like i have a lot of these shades i want to try their palettes i love the layouts the quality is there. I think they're always just so well thought out and put together and arranged so well with the colour story that like any fool, including this fool, can use them every single day of the week. They can really do no wrong in my eyes. Again, I struggle to think of something I haven't loved from them. I struggle. Next up, my eyes are giving you a clue it's pat mcgrath pat mcgrath oh my god again last year 
produced some of my absolute favourite products of the year in her foundation and in Divine Rose, which I have all over my eyes today. Those two products alone rocked my 2019. I love that she doesn't bring out huge volumes of products. I know she tends to drop a lot at one go, um, but I love that then, you know, a month can go by with nothing. Two months can go by with nothing. And then suddenly it's like, whoa, you know? We all kind of had a little bit of a falling out with Pat last year. You know, some of us less so than others because actually the only thing I wanted from her last year was her foundation, all her base products, her foundation and her powder, I didn't try the primer, um, and Divine Rose. But now obviously I, was e I easily was able to get both of those fairly easily. Um, Whereas any of you who tried to purchase her Star Wars collection, for example, any of you who tried to purchase Divine Rose and weren't successful, you may have a totally different feeling about Pat right now. I get it. I hear you. Um, yeah, so I hope to see less of that in 2020 from Pat McGrath. I definitely feel like she's learnt from that. I 100% think she's learnt from it. And I think we saw that with um, the uh, Chinese New Year mini palette that she brought out because that is still available, still widely available. So I definitely feel like she did learn some lessons last year. Um, and I, I just honestly think with the Divine Rose, something else was going on there something we don't know about. I feel like it was probably supposed to be a Asia exclusive. They probably had no idea what the popularity of the palette was going to be, which is a mistake, frankly. Um, maybe they had some stock left over that they decided to give as an exclusive to Selfridges because, you know, um, Sephora gets a lot of their uh, exclusive in the, in the US, I believe. So therefore they decided to give Selfridges one and then weren't anticipating the knock-on, tried to salvage something and just made a complete hash of it. That's what I genuinely think happened. And I do expect it to be back at some point, but who knows? I feel like now that she's seen how much people loved it, how successful it was, I think I think she'll bring it back. I, I like to think that Pat is someone who listens to the people. But enough about the drama. I just, I want to say that Pat can do no wrong, but clearly 2019 she did, she had some errors of judgment um but as far as the products the quality the performance can do no wrong in my eyes i'm always going to be excited whenever she brings something new out i'm always going to be excited about it she just lights a fire within my makeup soul next up one that i have had more of a sort of mixed like i can name a couple of fluffs from this brand but i have enough loves that it is still right up there and I'm still always really intrigued to see what they bring out and that is Laura Mercier. Now I've had a couple of not great experiences with Laura Mercier products, namely the Sunkist Veil from last year that I hated. Um, that is the only hate product from her. I didn't love the Caviar Mascara, it was okay but again it wasn't my kind of mascara to make it a love and a repurchase but otherwise foundation right up there her blushes yes please i feel like she has staples her powders her blushes her highlights her i mean like lots of people love her mascara just not me so i don't want to say it's terrible i feel like her concealer as well is lots of people's love again it's not my favourite, but again, a very popular product. I feel that everything that they put out is always worth checking out because there were just some absolute gold mines in there. And I'm always interested in their, what they're bringing out new. I, I just, I love their aesthetic of the brand. I love what they're going for. Their tinted moisturiser, I forgot to mention as well, was a big hit from last year that I really, really love. Um, so yeah, I think... Again, I love to see what they put out. Maybe less consistent for me than some of the other brands I've mentioned as far as whether it's a hit with me or not. But again, I'm just always excited and I have enough Laura Mercier that I love in like my top drawer that I still consider it like an absolute diamond. And last but not least are my top five. Can you guess what it is? Correct. 
or not. I can't hear all of you, you're all speaking at once. Last on my top five list is Fenty. Oh, again, another brand where I feel like everything I try from them is a hit. I loved their primer for the longest time, used a whole one up before Touch of Silk Canvas came into my life. Um, mascara that I've got on today is an absolute banger. Their highlights, one of if not my favourite highlight of all time. Both of their foundations, the matte one is, you know me, it's, it's too matte for me, but I still appreciate it as a matte foundation. Their luminous foundation, their hydrating foundation, again, absolute winner absolute bangers again i'm always excited by anything when it pops up and it's a new fenty release i'm excited about it i feel like they put the work in you know you're always going to get value for money with fenty i love their price point i think they're very fairly priced very reasonably priced and i love that they always give us like more for our money they give us extra fill sizes 35 mils of foundation 32 mils of primer um 12 and a half mils in their mascara they're always giving us an extra few mils which I very much appreciate especially as they are more of like a mid-range price point I love that they are easily available in the UK which I can't say the same for many many brands that you can walk into especially American brands big huge you know popular brands celebrity led that are available in the UK count them on one finger to be honest um so yeah absolutely really appreciate that from fenty i can walk into a physical store and look at the products and they drop on the same day in the uk as they drop in the us all of this stuff is just you know it's what makes me happy i'm a simple soul what can i say and now for the brands that i want to try more from so these are brands when i look at the list i'm like if I go through my drawers, I've got a couple of things from them, only a couple, and I want to try more. I want, I want to. Give me more. Give me more I want to pick up. This year, I want to try more from these brands because I have tried them, and what I've tried, I like it. First up, by Terry. Bye, Terry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> this is why I shouldn't film so early in the day. So I think, I'm trying to think of what I've tried from By Terry. Obviously, my head goes straight to my loose setting powder because it pretty much changed my life, if we're being honest. I think, is that the only thing that I've tried from them? I can't think of anything else. By Terry, By Terry, By Terry, By Terry. I think that's the only thing I've tried from them and it instantly became a top drawer an everyday absolute favourite. So clearly that is a travesty that I've only tried one thing from the brand. What have I been doing? <sighs> Next up Shiseido, last year rocked my world. First things I've tried from Shiseido, the foundation and the concealer, and they both went straight in in my like number one slot for those categories in my makeup routine. So really, I just want all of the Shiseido products this year. I want them all because apparently I've been sleeping on Shiseido. Who knew? Who flipping knew that they were so good? Who knew it? I didn't until last year. Now I do. Now I do. And I want more. Next up, and this is a sad one. So prepare your sad music. Maybe get a tissue. I don't know. Depends how you're feeling. This is it's hard, it's hard. This is Tatcha. Tatcha. Not available in the UK. Luckily, I have my silk canvas dealer in Mel. Um, you know, she keeps me in silk canvas year round. She's an angel. That's the only thing I've tried from them. And is not that a disgrace? Is that not a disgrace? Isn't it? that I have only tried one product from there and it is my holy grail. No other primer will ever touch my face again, but I can't try anything else. I want to try things. I want to try their eye cream. I want to try their finishing mist. I want to try it. Please let us have it in the UK. This is just, it's gone on too long. You know, if you're trying to build the suspense, we've got the suspense. We're about to head over suspense into giving up. And you, please don't let that happen to us, please. We need all the Tatcha in 2020. Come to the UK, for God's sake, it's time. 
Next up, a surprising one, and this is Chanel. I say it's surprising because I feel like it's surprising I haven't tried more from them because they are widely available. They do have lots of stuff out, coming out all the time, out your ears. But the only things I've tried from Chanel is one blush, I think, Elegance. I think that I only have one blush. And the Chanel Soleil Tante Chanel. As you know, two of my favourite products. One of my favourite bronzers, one of my favourite blushes. So, yeah, I need to try. I've never tried... Oh, I don't think I've ever tried a foundation from Chanel. I feel like people are going to be like, Charlotte, you, you reviewed it, what are you talking about? But my memory is awful. So, I think I've only tried those two products for, from Chanel. And I, I desperately need to try more. It's just, it's a disgrace. I just... Because a lot of their products aren't new, I always get, you know, I'm like a magpie, I get distracted by the new things and forget to look at existing collections and see what's good, you know? What's good? If you were to advise me to try something from Chanel, what should I try? Please let me know in the comments. And lastly, but not leastly, brands I want to try more from, and that is Lancome. I know, I don't think any of you were expecting it, were you? I, I wouldn't have thought so. So Lancome again, uh, Monsieur Big, hello, hello. We have a very, very long love affair going on, me and Monsieur Big. I've probably had 10 of them at this point. Their Tainted Doll foundation, top notch. Their Skin Feels Good, is that what it's called? Lancome Skin Feels Good, that sounds right. Um, all beautiful, love them, love it, love, love the brand, love the things I've tried from the brand. But again, I think that's it. I don't think I've tried their eyeshadow formula. I don't think I've tried any complexion products from them. I don't think I've tried any lip products from them that I can remember. I don't think I have. And I, I again, widely available in the UK. Walk into a shop and, and have a whole long con counter to yourself. I, I can only apologise. So those are my top five brands and my top five to try more of in 2020. And now we get to the juicy stuff, the tea, the brands that I am leaving behind me, that I am done with in 2020, that no longer do I have any interest in. Again, let's see if you can guess which five brands these are. First up, Jeffree Star. I can't ever say that I've massively loved the brand at all. I. I I liked their concealer and their powder. Um, neither became like my go-to in either category. I used to buy their li liquid lipsticks, um, but you know me, liquid lipsticks and mattes. I just don't. I don't ever use them. Um, yeah, there's nothing that's ever. I mean, his eyeshadow palettes just don't appeal to me at all. They're just not my style of eyeshadow. Um, so I've never been drawn to a palette. Same thing goes for his highlights, which every time I see them, I'm just like, that, that is never going anywhere near my face. So yeah, I'm just, I feel as though it's a brand that, you know, although I was never particularly excited for or wanting to buy from and support, more so than ever, I have no interest anymore in, in it if I'm being honest. Next up, it may look like I'm being shady putting these two back to back, you know what it's gonna be, and that is Kat Von D. Uh, Kat Von D has now apparently departed her brand, or she's sold her brand to, um, is it Kendo that owned her KVD Beauty, I think it's gonna be called now, so she has now sold all her shares and has no nothing to do with that brand anymore. She has gone. She has no creative involvement. She is taking no, according to them, she's taking no profit, no money, etc. So this has led lots of people to say, oh, maybe we can go back to Kat Von D or KVD, God, this is confusing, KVD Beauty, um, because she's no longer anything to do with it. And obviously the issue with that brand was that person and people's dislike for her and the things that she does um, and the things that she has done in, in the past um, and just generally her as an entity. Um, so without her involvement, people, I've seen the chatter 
in the social hemisphere that lots of people were actually hmm I may try the brand again now I may be able to go back because you know they cancelled the brand or they stopped supporting the brand because of that person's actions and now she's no longer connected maybe they want to pick stuff up from the brand but honestly I try to keep people out of makeup like I'm just like the, if, if I'm interested in the makeup I'm interested in the makeup and I I don't listen or read stuff that makes me feel stressed and angry so I, I don't really try I don't seek out to see it sometimes you can't help it can you but I certainly don't like investigate every brand owner before I make any purchase maybe I should I know some people feel that I should um, but honestly I, I'm tired a lot of the time um, and I also feel that there are just so many shitty people I'm so sorry I swore there are so many rubbish people out there particularly for some reason in the beauty industry that it's I, I feel I've talked about this before I feel like you can find you know an absolute dreg of society at the top of every makeup brand who has done some awful things said some awful things undoubtedly tweeted some awful things um, and that makes it impossible to buy anything these days but that all being said regardless if you take the person out of the brand um i just i can't tell you the last time i saw something come up from kvd beauty that i was like excited to buy or i thought yes i want to try that um her brow pencil was my go-to for a long time her liner liquid liner i know was lots of people's go-to for a very long time i think that's the only two products i've ever tried from the brand um i like them both I can certainly live without them both um I mean, when was the last time you got excited about something from that brand? That's what I'm saying to you. Next up, Tarte. Now, the only thing, quote me if I'm wrong again, the only thing I ever remember buying from Tarte is Shape Tape Concealer. And how many years ago was that? And there's not really anything that I have massively against the brand. Their shade range was trash. We know the Shape Tape Concealer was, I mean, sorry, foundation when it came out was an embarrassment and that was a whole thing so I chose not to review that foundation because it was just a mess and I wanted to steer well clear of any kind of ridiculously embarrassing shade range um but honestly anything else I don't it wasn't like I set out on some vendetta against Tarte to never buy anything from them again because of that um there's just not I, I look on their website there's nothing there they're not easy to get hold of in the UK again like they're stocked on their own website which is very expensive shipping and then they're stocked on QVC when they seem to do these weird package deals that nobody wants we just want the one product and you can only buy it as like a set and it's just ridiculous um so that I just have no time for it I have no time I just you know no I and actually they haven't brought anything out since shape tape that in the slightest bit interested me so that's number three for those reasons next up this one breaks my heart a little bit and there's still time for this one to turn around i just want to be clear about that but this is mac and i hate to say that because i've been a big supporter of mac over the years i mean i have 495 of their lipsticks upstairs which i still love and enjoy and use all the time um, they took away lip tensity, which was the greatest thing they've done in years, which baffled my mind. Um, they keep on doing these limited edition Christmas collections that are kind of getting very samey now. I used to get so excited about them. This is the first year I didn't touch that collection at all because I have it all five times over from the previous years. Um, yeah I feel like they're getting left behind and they need to do something quite quickly to not get completely drowned by those brands those who, who are really forward thinking and really bringing out stuff that is exciting us and you know making our heartbeats race I feel like they need to produce a phenomenal foundation I feel like they need to catch up their concealer game I feel like they need to reinvent their whole complexion products that have been like the same for years um, I think they need to stop taking things away that people really really love like lip tensity there's a lot of products that in their line that has been their product like their mascaras like their foundations and studio fix fluid and what's the other one I can't even remember it but yeah 
I feel like there's a lot of products that they're just kind of resting on their laurels relying on when really I want to see them pushing forward because if you're not going forwards you're going backwards and last but not least is Too Faced oh dear I mean 48 scandals in 2019 from Too Faced it's got to be some kind of record you know again I just have no time for hearing or listening to any of this rubbish but that aside or not I have not been interested in anything from Too Faced since their concealer, their Born This Way Sculpting Concealer, which again is not one of my go-to on the daily concealers. It's kind of, you know, it's a good one, it's a decent one, but I have ones that I like more since that came out. I've literally not even considered or looked twice at their releases. I feel like they're going down a very tart mac road of relying on their products that they keep re bringing back out that were hits but not really moving forward and they're definitely not listening to the consumer so again i'm gonna need to see some new stuff from Too Faced this year that is like actually innovative and listening to what people want amazing new foundation with a banging shade range from the start that's what I'd love to see. I'd love to see them revamp their eyeshadow palettes and bring out stuff that people really, really want to see that is different, that is not the same kind of childish packaging and shades that we've been seeing over and over and over again from the brand. Maybe that's not crazily heavily scented as well. Just a thought. So there you have it. Those are my top five brands. My goodbye five brands. And my five brands I want to see more from, I want to try more from in 2020. I would love to know how you feel about these brands and what your favourite, left behind, forgotten and excited for brands are in 2020. It's an exciting time to be alive, guys. Get excited. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.